I run a foundation. We have a center in Korogosho where we train women to make pads. And we support a safe house in Mombasa for survivors of GBV. And over and above all that, I'm a public speaker on social issues. So I moderate and speak not just in Kenya and on the continent, but in different parts of the world. So a global public speaker on social issues. So those are the main things I'm doing. Running my foundation and doing social justice speaking engagements around the world and raising my two beautiful boys. In the last year alone, ever since we started the pad project where we teach women to make pads, we produced about 55,000 sanitary products and empowered and impacted about 4,000 women and girls in the last one year alone. So, and in different parts of Kenya, Nairobi, Kisi, Kisumu, Mombasa. So that's what we're mostly doing as a foundation is the work around period poverty. I wake up every day thanking God for what I do, every day, because I love what we do as a foundation. Running a foundation is hard. It's the way you build a business. It's the way you build. It's not easy, but I think I, I wake up every day having conversations that I feel are important to me, working with people who um, I've either admired or have become mentors and friends, and also creating a platform, I think, for people to plug into the conversation and for people to, to grow. We have, a, we have a group called Inwadada Voices and they're youth advocates. And it just makes me so happy to see these young voices stepping into the space for us to step back and let them lead. Because I like to see people winning. I really particularly like to see young people winning. So yeah, I wake up every day thankful, even on the hard days, I'm thankful to be doing what I'm doing. Who I look up to is usually a tricky question because there's so many people who've informed my journey in life, from my parents to Wangari Mathai to people like Farida Karone, um, a lot of my colleagues in the industry. So it's usually a my children, I look up to them even if they're younger than me, and a lot of people in the social justice and media industry. So it's usually not just one person. If I was to name maybe one, two, three people, that. Just, I'd have to see it's just a combination of all these people. For the longest time, it's been Wangare Mathai, though, just because of what she stood for and what she fought for. And it was one of my biggest honors in life to meet her in 2009. So that's something I'll never forget. When I was on TV, I did Monday special on Citizen TV. And the show was always around social issues. And so I think, in a way, it informed the work I do today. So the transition has really come away from mainstream, even though from time to time I partner with mainstream. I've done rewrite her story with Plan International and Citizen TV twice. Um, I still carry out interviews on mainstream media, so I've never really 100% gone away from it. I'm just not regular anymore. Um, and so the transition has been a blessing to be able to, I would say to be able to talk about the issues that I'm passionate about, to be able to meet people from different parts of the world who are passionate about the same issues, and um, yeah, to just grow as a person, I think it's been great. I'm just very blessed to be raising the most oh yeah, amazing children. Yeah, any other day, 90% of the time, or should I say 85, I take my boys to school. That's very important for me. So my mornings are spent doing the school run. That's a typical day, starts with a school run. Even the days I'm emceeing and moderating usually start with the school run, then I go to the venue, unless it was super early like that day. And then in the, between the school run, I'm at, either at the office or on calls or trying to plan for events or programs for the foundation or partnerships. And then I'm also supervising homework or you know, connecting with friends. So you can't describe it as the same day that people have a quote unquote nine to five, as I'm sure it's the same with you guys. It's very dynamic. Unemployment as a global issue is it's a crisis. One way that governments can begin to address it is by understanding where the gaps are, what the low-hanging fruits are. When it comes to young people, listen to young people. <laughs> don't assume you know, don't, assume, don't, don't come up with reports about young people without young people. Put them front and center because they know best what they need. They just need the guidance and the platform. So I'd say one way is to just listen. What are the trends now? What are young people asking for? Advice to young women is usually a tough one because you know when you're young you're still going through whatever seasons of life I think be kind to yourself because being a young woman is a wonderful thing but it's also a bit challenging because people either don't take you seriously um, you struggle to maybe get through opportunities but also it is a world for young people today 
I feel like a lot of young people right now have an opportunity to make a difference, have an opportunity to live their best life. Be careful, learn yourself, be kind to yourself, forgive yourself, surround yourself with the right attitude and the right people. And if you make a mistake, fail forward. Failing is very much a part of life. But how are you learning from it? So be kind to yourself for sure. Yeah. The thing about gratitude is you have to practice it. Doesn't mean I've had really hard days. We all have. I've had really difficult seasons. We all have. Sometimes my hard days are seen by the world. So it's hard. But I've realized that when you're grateful for the good and bad, you remain present. Because you wake up knowing gratitude is just what gets you through the day. So even when I'm having a tough season, I'm on a journey with God right now. I don't want to say like I'm overly spiritual, but I, I, I do believe in God. I, I'm grateful that God is in my life, even though we know we, we have our own WhatsApp calls with God. Like it's not, <laughs> I don't want people to think I'm now claiming to be this overly, you know, holy Christian. I just think everyone's relationship with God is different. I have a relationship with God. And so when I wake up thanking God, even for the good and bad, I've noticed it gives me a sense of balance within me so that I'm able to just get through the day. So I don't know about content, but I'm grateful. I'm genuinely grateful. God has been good. Um, through the good and bad, I'm just grateful. The greatest lesson I've learned is that you just never stop learning. And the day you think you stopped learning, you have to check yourself because that's the beginning of going down. Yeah.